Hey guys, Yvonne here at YvonneMana.com. In this video, I want to show you how to create Microsoft ads in 2022. Over the past five years, I've generated a full-time six-figure income working from home or anywhere else in the world for that matter, as long as I have my laptop. And Microsoft ads was one of the ad networks that allowed me to do that. And so in this video, I want to show you exactly how to set up a campaign step by step as you watch behind my shoulder and see everything on the screen right here. Before we get into guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, hit the notification bell icon so you get notified when I release more videos just like this, helping you make money online. All right. That said, let's get straight into it. So the first thing you guys want to do is head over to ads.microsoft.com right over here. And if you have an account, then simply sign in. If you don't have an account, you can click on sign up now and just follow the steps. It's going to be a pretty simple process. You can also call them and they should be able to guide you through the entire journey. So very easy to do. You might have to verify your email address. You might have to enter your billing details. But once you do that, you should come to a page that's going to look something like this. And this is where we will be creating our campaigns. All right. So make sure to navigate to this campaign tab right over here on the left. And the first thing we're going to do to create our campaign is click on create campaign right here. I do cover every single one of these options and everything here at the top in my Microsoft ads training course at ivanmana.com slash all dash courses. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you the most popular and also the most basic form of an ad, which is going to be a search ad. And in my opinion, it is the most effective ad because you're actually giving people what they are looking for. So you're able to get really, really targeted traffic. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do here. So we're going to click on visits to my website. We're going to click on search ads. We'll click next. And then we're just going to go from top to bottom, filling in the blanks. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using my website as an example, which is ivanmana.com. And what I do here is I offer a free 55 page affiliate marketing guide. And so that's what we're going to be promoting here as an example for this video. So the name of our campaign, let's say Yvonne Mana F marketing guide. That's the name. You can put whatever you want for the budget. The higher you spend, the faster you're going to get results, right? When I first started with affiliate marketing five years ago, I started off with a $10 a day budget for each campaign. So you can start with that as well, but I don't suggest going super low, like one or $5 a day, because then it's going to take a long time to get the data. So I'm just going to leave it at $20 here for now. Next, you can set the location. So where do you want your ads to show up? Generally, when I'm first testing an offer, I like to go with the tier one countries, which are countries that have the highest quality traffic. So that means Canada. We're going to click enter. We'll click target. We'll type in America. We'll click enter. We'll make sure you're selecting the country. You can enter United Kingdom. We'll click enter, click target. And you can do the same for the other two countries, New Zealand and Australia. And these are the tier one countries, but we're going to stick with these three for now. So we're going to scroll down. I'm going to deselect this option and make sure that I only target people in my targeted location. For the language, we also want to leave it at English. This will not translate your ads. So if you select German, for example, your ads will not be translated from English to German. What this is, is you'll be showing your ads to people with a specific language interface. So if somebody's interface is English, chances are that they speak English. And so that's what this is. If you select German here, then you'll be showing your ads to people who have a German interface. So most likely they also speak German, but we don't know if they speak English or not. So because our ads are English and because we're targeting English speaking countries, I'm going to select English here. We're going to leave everything else blank. Again, I covered this in my detailed course, but that is not necessary to continue through with this video and to actually set up a campaign. These are just bonus things. So next we have to enter a website. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to copy my website, come back here, enter it. And we can enter an ad group name. So generally what I like to do is create several ad groups with tightly themed keywords. So for example, one ad group could be about how to make money online. Another ad group could be about affiliate marketing guide, things like that. So what we could do is we could get some ideas here. And as you can see, Microsoft already pulled up some ideas based on our website. What we can do though is we can delete this and we can instead type in affiliate marketing guide and we can click enter and let's see what ideas we get here. So what I like, what I'm going to do for this ad group is I'm going to select affiliate marketing guide keywords. So because I'm promoting an affiliate marketing guide, I'm going to say affiliate marketing guide, affiliate marketing PDF, affiliate marketing ebook, because this is what I offer, right? So keywords are basically what you want people to type in for your ads to show up. So I want people to type in affiliate marketing ebook in order to see my ad. I don't want them typing in guide 
for example. That is just too broad of a keyword. I don't want them typing in affiliate because then I'm gonna be paying for that click, but if they typed in affiliate, they probably have something else in their minds, right? So for this ad group, I want to stick with these keywords. So this is gonna be our affiliate marketing guide. Now I'm not gonna create many different ad groups in this video because it is a more advanced tactic, but generally I'm just letting you know that's what you wanna do. You wanna create different ad groups with different tightly themed keywords because once you get to the ad creation part, you're gonna to have to create an ad that speaks to this, these people, right? So if I have an ad that says, get your free affiliate marketing guide, that's gonna be perfect for these people. But if I have another ad group for how to make money online, and my ad says, get your affiliate marketing guide, then that's probably not what people are looking for, right? They might not click, even though that is something that I offer. I do teach people how to make money online using my guide but you have to be able to make that connection between the keywords and the ad copy. So again, slightly more advanced tactic. Don't worry about it for now. For the time being, we're just gonna stick with one ad group and we're gonna be targeting people that are searching for some affiliate marketing book, introduction to affiliate marketing, right? So that's okay for now. We can keep looking. I can click on next and I could, for example, click on 27 keywords. I can go through all of them, see if I like something. I could say, oh, affiliate marketing, affiliate program. Let me see, does this make sense? You know, Does this look good for my ad group? And not in this case, but you can take a look and that's basically how you do keyword research. Now, another way you could do keyword research is using a keyword planner. So if you click on tools and you go to keyword planner, you can use that to do more thorough keyword research. I do cover that in a separate video. I'm gonna link it in the description down below, but that is also something a little more advanced if you want to go in there and actually do very thorough research to get as targeted and as relevant an audience as possible, okay? now. That said, in addition to adding keywords, there are different keyword match types. So let me explain what I mean. So if you put, for example, square brackets around your keyword, that means that somebody has to type this in exactly into the search term for your ad to show up. There could be some, mis uh, some spelling variations. There could be plural form, you know, misspellings, things like that. That will still count. Your ad will still show up. But if somebody types in any other words before, after, or within these three words, your ad will not show up. So if somebody types in affiliate marketing guide into micro into bing.com, then your ads will show up. And I don't know why it keeps asking us to leave site. I'm not doing anything to prompt that, but so if you have square brackets, somebody has to type that in exactly. So if somebody types in affiliate marketing guides, you know, with an S at the end, my ad can still show. If somebody types in affiliate marketing ebook, for example, my ad might still show. So another thing you should keep in mind is that if Microsoft determines that a word is synonymous with another word, for example, ebook and book, if Microsoft determines that the two words are synonymous, then if somebody types in that synonymous word, your ad can still show up. So if Microsoft determines that ebook is synonymous with guide, then if somebody were to type in for just this keyword, right? We're just looking at this keyword. If somebody were to type in affiliate marketing ebook, my ad could still show up but I can't tell you an exact list of synonymous keywords because that is up to Microsoft and they have their own algorithms and processes for doing that. So if somebody types in get affiliate marketing guide, my ad will not show up. If somebody types in affiliate marketing guide for free, my ad will not show up. If somebody types in affiliate get marketing guide, my ad will not show up. Somebody has to type in this pretty much exactly into the search for my ad to show up, okay? So that is called exact match type. Next, you have the phrase match type, and you get that by putting these quotation marks before and after the keyword. And this is similar to the exact match type in that all these words must be present in the search term for your ad to show up. So if somebody types in PDF, my ad will not show up. If somebody types in affiliate, my ad will not show up. Somebody has to type in affiliate, marketing, and PDF. They have to type those three words in order for your ad to show up. Now, the difference between this and the exact match is that you could have any words before, after, or within this keyword. So if somebody types in affiliate marketing PDF free into search, my ad will show up. If somebody types in get affiliate marketing PDF, my ad will show up. If somebody types in marketing PDF for affiliates, my ad will show up. So as long as these words are in there, that's all that matters, all right? So I'm gonna get to the whole point of this and why we're even discussing these match types after I finish the last one, but pay attention to this, this is important. 
Now, the last match type is a broad match type. And for that one, you don't need any symbols before or after your keyword. And just as the name suggests, this is the most broad keyword you can get. So if somebody types in this, these exact words into the search term, your ad will show up. If somebody types in anything before, after, or within these words, the ad will show up. But also if somebody types in something loosely related to this keyword, your ad will show up. Okay. So that's why it's called broad because you're getting the broadest spectrum of people you can. So if somebody types in, for example, learn affiliate marketing for dummies, your ad could probably show up under this broad match type. If somebody types in something like make money online with affiliates or something like that, your ad could show up. So as you can see, it's pretty broad. It's not exactly the point you're trying to convey here, which is, Hey, I have an ebook that I want to give to people, but it's going to attract the widest selection of people. Now you might be wondering, what's the point who cares about these match types. So the point is if you want the most targeted and the most relevant audience, let's say you're tight on budget or you have a very specific offer, you have a very specific thing you're offering and you don't want to stray left or right from the main offer. You want to use exact because you want somebody to type this in exactly for your ads to show up. If you have a big budget and you're okay to experiment and do testing, you can use broad because if you use broad, you might see some ideas. Once you access the search term report to see what people typed in exactly to trigger your ads to show up, you will be able to get new ideas that you haven't thought of before. For example, if somebody types in make money as an affiliate, my ad could show up. And if I make sales for this search term that people typed in, I could go, Oh, that's cool. I had no idea that my website could convert so well with this keyword. So then I could add it. I could add it as a separate keyword and I can start making money that way. Right? So broad is an excellent way if you have a bigger budget and you're okay to test, because keep in mind, even though you might get some good keyword ideas, you will also get a lot of trash, a lot of things that don't make sense. And again, I don't know why it says leave page, but somebody could type in something totally irrelevant. For example, they could type in video game for affiliates and my ad could show up. And that's probably not what I want to pay for. Right? I don't want to pay for people that are searching for video games. So things like that, you might come across it if you select broad, but if you have a big enough budget and you're okay to test and experiment and get ideas, that could be an option for you. If you want something in between, you could go with phrase where you're okay to get some new ideas, but you also want to make sure that the main concept is here. So phrase is a very good match type while you're starting off while you're testing, and then you can switch to exact. So hopefully that makes sense for the keywords and the different match types and how this works. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to click on save and go to next step. And now this is where we will create our ad. So for the ad, we have to create it tailored to our specific ad group. So if our ad group is about affiliate marketing guide, we should probably create an ad tailored to that. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to click on create ad. I don't like responsive search ads. So we're going to select this option here from the drop down, give it a second. And we're going to select expanded text ad, and this will give us the most amount of control. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in my website, ivanmana.com. Next, we have to enter the title part. So for the first headline, for the first title part one, I do like to include the keywords. So if I'm promoting an affiliate marketing guide, I want to say affiliate marketing guide. I could say free affiliate marketing guide because it is. So as you can see, if people are typing in get affiliate marketing PDF and I tell them free affiliate marketing guide, that's pretty relevant to what they're looking for, right? So this ad speaks to them. So for title part two, I like to include a call to action, get now, get started now, watch now, learn more, click here for Google ads. You cannot use the call to action click here, but for Microsoft ads, you can. So you could say something like click here to get started now, or you could say, get started now, sign up now, learn more, read guide, download guide. Any of these call to actions are good because I learned that if you don't tell people to do something, they won't. So you have to guide them and make it easier for them. If you say click here, they're much more likely to click. It just makes it that much easier for them. Title part three is optional. Uh, if I do add it, then I usually describe my offer. So for example, 55 page ebook. So contains, contains 55 pages, or I could say 55 page ebook, something like that. Keep in mind, these are all my rules of thumb. So if you want to change it around and you want to include this in the Second title part, you can do that. You can do testing. I'm going to show you how to do that, but this is my rule of thumb. This is my default that I always go to that. I always fall back on that has generally worked very well for me. So we can say 55 page. I don't know if I spelled that right. Maybe like that ebook. 
And then for the path, again, this is optional as well. And you can include, you can just say something like free guide, for example, and that's just going to show up over there. Now, this doesn't mean that this is going to be your website. It is not going to be ivanmanacom slash free guide, but it is just what is, what is going to show up. Okay. For at text one, I like to include some information about the offer. So you do need at text one, at text two is optional. So what I could do is come in here and I could copy this whole part, cheat a little bit, and we can paste it here. And it says exceeded by 68 characters. So the limit is 90. So we can probably get rid of that. We don't want to use all caps. So we could say today. And then I do like to title case everything. So learn what affiliate and there you go. I title cased everything. And as you can see, I used an ampersand because it draws a little bit more attention than just the words, right? So learn what affiliate marketing is and how you can make money with it today. I could also add an ad text too. Again, this is optional. If I were to add it, I would maybe say something like free 55 page affiliate marketing guide teaches you how to make money online, something like that. And once you're done with this, you can click on save. And then I told you that I'm going to show you how to make a split test. So testing this is always good. You always want to be testing guys, seeing what works, what doesn't. Maybe there's a better headline that can work. So what I do like to do is click on copy ad over here. And then again, it prompts us to leave. I don't know why I'm going to click edit and I can change something around, change only one thing at a time. Do not drastically change your ad because then you won't know what works, what doesn't, right? So the idea is you're going to be testing these two different ads and you'll be seeing the clicks, the impressions, the sales, the signups, things like that. And you're going to be able to tell which one works better. And so you only want to change one thing at a time, maybe only the title, maybe only the title part two, maybe only title part three, just so that you will be able to tell which of these is actually better, right? Why did one ad do better than the other? That's the idea. I generally suggest changing these two first and then add text one. Like I said, title part three is optional. So it's not always seen and add text two is optional. So I wouldn't really change these too much, but I would focus on, I would start off by changing these two or well, one of these two and then see which one works better. So instead of saying click here to get started now, we can say something like get your free guide now, something like that and see if that works better. And then we can hit save. And so now we have two different call to actions. One says click here. Another says get your free guide now. So we can see which one works better. And so that's the idea. We can scroll down, add extensions. They are not necessary. Again, I cover them in thorough detail in my training course, but for the purpose of this video, it is not necessary to set up your campaign. So we're going to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. We're going to click save and go to next step. Now this is where we review everything. So we review our budget. We select our bid strategy. I do suggest going with enhanced CPC. Keep in mind that sometimes Microsoft will charge you a little bit more than your bid, which is how much you're willing to pay per click. So make sure not to set it too high because Microsoft will sometimes exceed it in order to get clicks. And then this is where you will actually set the bid. So the default here is five cents. I could maybe say 20 cents. I do like to start low and then just see how the ad goes, see how many impressions I'm getting, how many clicks I'm getting. Because if I'm not getting enough clicks or impressions, impressions is how many times somebody has seen your ad, then I can increase my bid, right? But if I start with a very high bid, let's say I start with $5, then I might exhaust my entire budget in one hour. And then I'll say, oh, where did all this money go? This is not what I wanted. I didn't want this keyword. I didn't want this ad, right? So starting low gives you enough time to test things out. So I, I would start with maybe 25 cents and it also does depend on your niche, right? So if you're, for example, in law and you are targeting law keywords, then 25 cents is going to be way too low. Some of those keywords go for $100 plus. So for those, you do want to start low, but not as low as 25 cents, maybe $25, maybe $50, right? Things like that. So depending on your niche, you will have to adjust accordingly. And if you're asking me, well, how do I know how much is each click worth in my niche? So what you would do is you would use these estimated monthly impressions. So if I'm getting four, I think that's a good enough number to get started. But if I type in 25 cents and I still get zero, then that's probably not enough. I probably want to increase it, right? So if these were lawyer keywords, I would definitely get zero here. Like personal injury lawyer, this would still be zero until I hit like $50. Then it's going to be more, right? So that's how you would know. Again, you could also use the keyword planner and it will have some data there. Again, I have that video linked in the description to show you how to do it and how to see the actual bids, estimates, things like that. So once you're happy with this, you can click on save and the campaign is now under review. You, you can click done and that is it. Congratulations. Give yourselves a pat on the back. You have created your campaign. If you click on this campaign, 
you can go to the ad group. You have the ad group here. You can adjust the bid. You can say, okay, 25 cents is too much or it's too little. You can change it. You can go into ads and you have your two ads here. I don't suggest doing any more than two ads at a time, especially if you're limited on budget, because then each ad will not get to be seen too much, right? So I would generally start off with two ads at a time to make sure that each ad gets the light of day, right? And it's shown so you can actually know what works, what doesn't. You can go into keywords and then you can adjust, you can edit, delete, add more keywords here. You can select this, you can click edit, you can delete keywords, you can pause keywords, you can change the bids for the keywords. So yeah, one more thing, you can also adjust the bid for each individual keyword. So if you go over here, you can click here and you can adjust the bid for this specific keyword. And that's basically it. You can go into settings, you can go into locations, you can again, choose your location, choose the ad schedule, you can choose your devices. If you only wanna show this on mobile or desktop, things like that, you can do that here. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys found value. If you enjoyed the way I teach, if you enjoyed this content, definitely take a look at my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Yvonne Mana. I have over 400 free videos, guys, on my YouTube now at this point for pretty much everything you can think of surrounding online marketing and Google, Microsoft, ClickBank, you know, all these affiliate networks. So take a look. So, so, so much free content, guys. So much free content. I also offer training courses at evonmana.com slash old courses. So check that out as well. And if you want more detail into anything I said, that is the way to go. That is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.